Welcome to another video. This one requires that we find the greatest common factor of two big numbers, but they're written in this form. 4 to the 8th minus 1 and 8 to the 12th minus 1. So, um, you know, you're not expected to multiply out these numbers because it's going to take a while because this is a competition question and it is from the Harvard MIT math tournament, the algebra section of 2014, and the answer to this problem is 15, 1, 5. Now, if you could recall a similar problem I did where we were not given the values of the base, we were just given them in terms of x, and we were asked to find the greatest common factor of x to the 91 plus 1 and x to the 65 plus 1, we figured out that it was x to the 13th plus 1. And the same exact steps I used in that video I'm going to use here because now we have the numbers so we can easily tell what the answer is. Let's get into the video. The strategy I'm going to employ here is the Euclidean algorithm for finding the greatest common factor of any two numbers. And I'm just going to show you what we typically do and what I'm going to do here. So let's pick two random numbers that we can easily verify. So I'm going to pick the numbers 54 and 24 using the Euclidean algorithm. Okay, I'm for, let's say I'm doing 54 and 24. 4, 54, and 24. Obviously, I know the answer to this is 6. 6 is the, num the only number that divides 54, the biggest number that divides 54 and also divides 24. But assuming I didn't know, what would you do? Well, you're going to take 54 and write it in terms of 24. Okay? And see what I'm going to say. I'm going to say that 54 is equal to, I know I can get two of this in 54, but I don't want to do that because of what I'm going to do with this question. Okay? I'm going to say 54 is 24 plus 30. So it's 24 times 1, 1 times 24 plus 30. So now this is what you do. The number of times it goes in 54 does not matter. Remember, I could have said it is 2 times 24 plus... What would this be? 2 times 24 would be 48 plus 6. And it would have given away the answer so quickly. But I'm dragging it because I'm, I will have to drag this one. Okay, now, so I got 1 times 24 plus 30 gives me 54. Now, the number of times 24 goes in 54, you ignore it. You now focus on the divisor, which is this 24, and the remainder, you now treat them as if you're starting the problem again. So you st still have to use the Euclidean algorithm now for 24 and 30. So because 30 is the bigger number, I will say that 30 can be written as 1 times 24 plus, what's left? 6. Okay, now we're not done. You're going to look at it again and go, okay, um... Yeah, I've been doing it several times, so I can't do that anymore. Because now if I do it with 6, well, we, we get it. So now I'm going to ignore this, and I'm going to take 24 and write it in terms of 6, since this is the bigger number. So I'm going to say 24 is equal to, um, I'm going to write 6. How many times will 6? Now that I, I can't do that anymore. Otherwise, I can keep going, actually. If I want to do 1, 1, 1, 1, you keep doing it until you get to the final answer. You know what? Let me do that. It's going to be 6 plus what? 24. No, let's just stop. It's going to be 3. No, it's 4. It's 4. Times 6 is 24, remainder 0. Whenever you get remainder 0, you just go up here. The number on top of 0 is the greatest common factor. <laughs> it looks like... Or... I could have erased everything from the beginning. So what I could have done is this. I could have said, 
How many times will 24 go in 54? It's two times, which is gonna be 48. So I could have said, this is two times 24, plus what's the remainder? Six. Then I would have done the last thing here and say that and said that 24, so you ignore this, you just take the divisor and the remainder and say 24 is equal to how many times will six go in 24? Four times. Four times six plus a remainder of zero. Now that I get a zero, this is my answer. So that's the exact thing we're gonna do with these numbers. So let's translate this process into this. So, which is bigger? I Obviously this is, well, it's even hard for us to compare them because we have to know. So let's write the two in the same base. So we can say that four, to the eight minus one is equal to two to the two squared, that, that would be two to the 16 minus one, because this would be two squared and the power will multiply this would give you 16, okay? And we also know that eight to the 12 minus one is the same thing as, da, 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 that's gonna be two to the third, that's two to the 36 minus one. In the previous example I did, people were able to see immediately that any number that, the biggest number that divides 16 and also divides 36 might be a major part of your final answer. Okay, but I don't want you to make that assumption. It is correct though, but I have not proven that it is always correct. So that's why what I want you to do is just follow the Euclidean algorithm. This is the bigger number. I'm going to say that using Euclidean algorithm, not the extended Euclidean algorithm, because if I use the extended one, I cannot do some of the things I'm about to do. Um, so I go that two to the 36 minus one will have to be, how many times will this divide this? Well, look at the exponent here, two to the 16, two to the 36. I cannot say it does it twice. What would I multiply this by to get two to the 36? It will be 20. So two to the 20 times two to the 16 minus one. You see, now if I multiply this by this, I'm gonna get two to the 36. But because this is in the parenthesis, I'll have to multiply this by two to the 20. So this gives me two to the 36 minus 2 to the 20. So I have to add back the 2 to the 20. Okay, so what I have just done is I have generated 2 to the 36, but I still have to subtract 1. See, this will, this will multiply this and cancel this out. So what I have left is just 2 to the 36, but I still need minus 1. So we can treat this as if this is this part, this part, and then this part is now the remainder. So you can treat this as if it's the remainder, okay? And this is the divisor. So now which of these two is bigger? Well, I think this is bigger than this. So I'm gonna make this now my main part, two to the 20 minus one can be written as a multiple of this, which is, this is still a new divisor. So it's gonna be the same thing. What would I multiply? two to the 16 by to get two to the 20 has to be two to the fourth. So this is two to the fourth times two to the 16 minus one. Again, now when I do this, this is gonna give me two to the 20 which is here, but two to the fourth minus this is gonna give me minus two to the fourth, so I have to add it back plus two to the fourth. Now I have to subtract one, okay, minus one. So I treat this again. So now let's look. Now this is bigger than this, so I'm gonna write this in terms of this. So I do two to the 16 minus one will be equal to, how many times will this get this? It's gonna be two to the four times. Then I have two to the four. No, it's not two to the four. How many times? Two to the 12 times times two to the four minus one. Nice. 
yeah, it's not four because now if I add the two, I'm gonna get 16 back. No, so that's gonna be, I'm gonna have to add the plus two to the 12 so that I have a minus one. That's crazy. So that's the problem with you dealing with exponents. You have to keep following the steps until you finally get your answer. I don't know if I'm gonna have enough space for this, but let's go to the next one. Okay, so this is our remainder, and it looks like the remainder is bigger than this, so I have to do the same thing. Two to the 12 minus one can be written as um, two to the eighth times two to the fourth, minus one plus two to the eighth minus one. So now I take this as the main one again. So I have two to the eighth <laughs> minus one equals, this is now two to the fourth times two to the fourth minus one. So that's two to the eighth, that's plus two to the fourth minus one, and that's it. And then finally, Yep, so now this and this are the same. So I'm gonna say two to the fourth minus one can be written as two to the fourth minus one multiplied by one, yes, plus, what's the remainder? Zero. So remember, as soon as you get zero, the, re the previous remainder becomes your G C, F, okay? So two to the fourth minus one is what? So we can easily write it somewhere here. Let's just put it here. G, C, F equals two to the fourth minus one, which is 16 minus one, which is equal to 15. So if you have a giant calculator that could actually write out these numbers, you'll find out that the biggest number that can divide both of them would be 15. Never stop learning. Fills will stop learning. Stop living. Bye-bye.